Hey guys, welcome to another Essential Tutorial. So today I'm going to be showing you how to take your scene from Unreal Engine 5 over to Omniverse Create using their new connector. In this tutorial I'm going to be using Unreal Engine Preview 2 and I'm going to be using the latest release from NVIDIA Omniverse version 2022 as well. So there are some new features that have been added that I'm going to be going over later in this video. Before I get into how we export from Unreal, let's first go over what we need to have installed on our system in order to make everything work correctly. So under the Omniverse launcher and under the Nucleus tab, if you do not see the Nucleus service running, it means that you do not have Nucleus server installed. So in order to install it, we're going to add a new service and we're going to choose a destination path. One thing I recommend is not choosing a network path unless you understand how to use firewall permissions. So I'm just going to use the downloads folder on my C drive and I'm going to just set up this basic administrative account, which we're going to need to remember these credentials for later on when we're setting it up. Now that it's installed, you should see this screen where we have a projects folder by default. You're also going to want to have Omniverse cache installed and optionally, you're going to want to also install Omniverse drive. This is just a quick way to add a network drive to our Windows Explorer so that we can quickly access the contents of our Nucleus server. So you can see I have it attached here as drive O, and now all of our projects later on will be visible here on this page. So if I go to the settings page, I can confirm that all of the services we need are running, our cache is installed correctly, and under connections here, you can see that I actually have two services running, which I don't want. If you do not see any connections, you can quickly add one by going add. In my case, I created it under localhost, and you can log in using the credentials you set up earlier. And that should be all you need in order to get up and running. The last step you'll need to do is to install the NVIDIA Omniverse Unreal Engine 5 connector. You can confirm that it's installed correctly if you see the green circle in the upper left hand tab. Additionally, you can go to edit plugins, type in Omniverse, and you can confirm that the plugin is enabled there as well. So everything is running correctly in my project, and we're ready to move on to the next step of exporting. Using the Omniverse tab, let's hit Add Server. We can then add the localhost Nucleus server we created earlier. This is going to directly add a Nucleus server right within our Unreal Engine project. There are some additional settings from Live Edit to exporting and cleaning up our project, but we're not going to worry about those for now. So the way I have my Unreal Engine project set up is I have a few cameras, lights, meshes, and I have a few volumetric assets as well. We can either go to the Omniverse tab and we can export our entire scene or we can individually export items. So you can access it here or you can go to the content browser and you can right click on a map and you can export the entire map to Omniverse that way as well. And if you want to export an individual object, just right click on it and hit export to Omniverse. So I'll show you both ways here. Let's go ahead and export each individual item first. So we're going to right click on the statue and then we're going to hit export to Omniverse. I'm going to include the MDL and I'm going to leave all the settings basically the same. If you want to find out more, there's some documentation, but for the most part, these settings are pretty self-explanatory. So the only thing I'm going to change here is I'm going to go import to Y axis as that's how it's built in Omniverse. And then we're going to find a place on our Nucleus server. And you can see here it's within our Unreal Engine project. And let's just give it a name. I'm then going to repeat these steps for the other items as well. So for the building material, let's go export to Omniverse, leave all of the settings the same, and then just hit Y axis again. And lastly, we're going to choose a floor and we're going to do the exact same thing. Let's select all the items now in our Unreal Engine project, and I'm going to export a version of this as well, so I can show you what that looks like in Omniverse. So again, we're going to leave all of the settings the same, and the only thing I'm going to change now is the y-axis. Now, one little caveat I wanted to mention is if your project is crashing at this stage when you're exporting, one thing you might want to check is the UVs on the meshes you're using in your scene. You can see here, one of the meshes I'd used previously, an FBX file that I'd imported, was throwing errors about zero tangents and zero binormals, which means that either there was no UVs on that object, or the UVs had overlapping errors. So if I bring up the UVs on this object, you can see on the UV map, there was some messiness going on. So one of the new features in Unreal Engine 5 is you can actually go down to the modeling tab 
and you can actually auto unwrap your model. This is just a quick way to fix any potential issues with your UVs. And hopefully that fixes any crashing that's happening when you're exporting to Omniverse. You can also fix this in the original 3D software that you're using, but this was just a quick way to do it directly within Unreal Engine. So now that all of those pieces are exported, we're ready to jump into NVIDIA Omniverse Create. So in a brand new project here, you're going to see all of the files on our Nucleus server that we previously exported from Unreal Engine. If I right click on each of those individual layers and I go add as a sublayer, you can see them get directly added into our project. So I just added the floor first, and then I can add in the statue as a sublayer, and finally I can add our building layer as well. And now just flying into my scene, you can see we already have a pretty good setup. I'm going to change it into path tracing. And now as I start to move our light around, you can see that it's already pretty much created what I originally had set up. So that's the first way we can import all of the individual pieces to assemble our scene. If I create a new project here, and now I import the full scene that we had exported, you can see that all of the layers are now brought in together. Our lights, our meshes, our cameras, and everything else that we had chosen. And just like that, we're already up and running. Let's just create a new camera for this view, and then under the render settings, I'm going to change a few things there as well. Let's just change out the sky real quick though using one of these presets, and then I'm going to increase a bunch of our path tracing samples so that our scene looks better. I'm going to increase the max bounces, the specular and transmission, and I'm going to add a bit of fog samples as well. And then under the post-processing, I want to add a bit of motion blur and then some subtle bloom. You'll find that the fog is no longer under the path tracing and it's now under the common tab under global volumetric effects. Let's just play around with it here and I'm going to change it down so that the density is very, very low. So the way we used to animate our cameras before was using the keyframer extension, but that's been depreciated now as of 2022. And the new way to do it is using the new window animation timeline extension. First, I'm going to open up our sequencer as we're going to need that later on. And if we go to window animation timeline, you're going to see this new extension at the bottom of our screen. Using any objects that are selected in our stage, we can add keyframes now directly to those items. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend our timeline here to 250 frames. I'm going to drag it out here so we can see all of that. And then I'm going to select my camera and I'm going to add a keyframe on frame zero. Then I'm going to go to the end of our scene and I'm going to move our camera back a bit. And then I'm going to add another keyframe. And there you go. So you can see we now have a bit of camera animation. Now, if you want to adjust the curves on those keys, go to the window animation curve editor extension. And as long as the camera is still selected in our stage, we're going to see all of the keyframes we just created, which we can select and set them to linear. Now, as I play through the timeline, you can see our new camera animation. Now, in the same way there's a sequencer in Unreal Engine, there's also a sequencer in Omniverse Create. And this is how we can piece together various camera shots. So let's create a second camera angle here. And I'm going to just go and bring it a bit closer. And then using the same process as before, we're going to create a new keyframe on frame zero. And then we're going to scrub ahead to frame 250. Move a little bit. And then create a new keyframe. So once again, let's go to the curve editor and making sure that our second camera is selected in the stage view, we can see all of the keyframes we just created. So let's highlight those and then we're going to set those to linear as well. So now that we have two cameras animated, let's add them into a new sequence. We can do that by going to the sequencer window and then simply dragging in each of the cameras that we want to have included. So dragging in camera one and then dragging in camera two, they're now both added. I can reorder the layers by right clicking and moving them up or down. And just like that, we have the first and then second shot stitched together. We can also animate lights within our timeline extension as well. So in this case, I want to animate the direction of our light. And it works the exact same way that we animated our cameras. So making sure that the light is selected in our stage view, I'm going to add a keyframe on frame zero. And then I'm going to jump ahead to frame 250, change the rotation of our light, and once again, add a new keyframe at the end. So now both our cameras and the light are animated within our sequence. Similar to Unreal Engine, 
we can jump out of that locked camera sequencer view by going to the sequencer extension and unclicking the camera icon. That way we can use the perspective or other camera angles to view our animation. And just like we did with the cameras, I'm going to change the keyframes on our lights within the curve editor as well. I'm also going to add one final camera angle into our sequence. So by going to perspective and flying around our scene, I can find another camera angle I like. Once I find one, I can simply go to camera, create angle from view. On this last camera angle, I'm also going to play around with the f-stop or aperture in order to add depth of field. So just as I did before, I'm going to add a keyframe on frame 0. Then I'm going to move my camera, jump to frame 250, and add one final keyframe. Then I can jump into the curve editor in order to adjust the Bezier curves on those keyframes. In this case, I'm going to set them once again to linear. You can animate any of these parameters, including the color, translation, and if you want to, you can animate the focal length as well. But for this example, I'm going to keep it fairly simple. So let's add in that last camera into our sequence. And just like that, you can see how quickly we can iterate on our animation. So now that my animation is done, I want to render it out. So I can do that by going to Window, Rendering, and then hitting Movie Capture. Here we can set all of the settings for our frames per second, the length of our timeline, and what type of rendering style we want. So in this case, I'm going to set it to RTX Path Tracing. I'm going to set our samples to 24. I'm going to keep our motion blur samples the same. And one of the new features available is AOVs, or render passes. So if you create those AOVs, it's going to add all of these files into your stage view. And the only thing you have to change is under the render view, we want to add the cameras which those AOVs affect. So I'm going to add all three cameras we created. I'm going to set the resolution to 1920 by 1080. And then back in the movie capture window, we just want to enable use render product to capture, and then select the one we previously created. And that's it. So I selected the path I wanted to export to, simply hit .exr, and then hit capture sequence. So that covers some of the basics as far as how I got my Unreal Engine 5 project into Omniverse. Personally, I love the look of Omniverse more, but that's just a personal preference. And I also find the workflow to be a little closer to traditional rendering pipelines. But that being said, the scenes I'm showing here were not direct comparisons, because the lighting and camera angles were all animated slightly differently. So I recommend finding ways to combine both, because they're both amazing technologies. Anyway, hope you learned something, and I'll see you next time.